What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Bittersweet Podcast. It's your girl, Wintana. And I'm Rahel. And we're back with a solo episode. Yes. And on this. the couch. <laughs> the famous couch. Literally, we never record on this couch. No. So it's like, um, yeah, I love it. I, I don't know. I kind of like the seats better when it's just the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes feels more, more like, yeah, it makes more sense. Yeah. It feels more like homey. Yeah. How know. have you been? You're good. <laughs> I've been, yeah, I've been good. <laughs> you had a whole mission today. I had a whole mission <laughs> today. Like, it's like, what time is it now? It's like f- almost five o'clock. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I lost my keys this morning, which was just like so annoying. It was so annoying. I The process of, yeah. Yeah, because I live, um, like I don't have a backup person that has mm. like a, a set, another set of my keys. So I have another set of keys, but they're in my house, which is just like annoying. But um, I was walking my dog, Sebastian, and <laughs> so Sebastian I take him out. to like feature on an episode because I swear <laughs> to God, the amount of things you do for this dog. I know. I take him out because I usually walk him like three times a day. Yeah. So I take him on his like afternoon walk and I regret it so much. And I'm wearing this jacket that I'm wearing now and it's like an op shop situation so it's got a hole yeah in the pocket which i didn't realize so i just put my keys in the pocket and they fall out while i'm walking and you know when something like fucked up happens and you don't think it's deep like at first i was like oh surely like i'll find them yeah yeah so i wasn't stressed i wasn't stressed at all i was like whatever like when i got to the door i was like okay it's all good like surely i would have just like dropped them i did like four rounds wait what do you mean surely i'll find them like i'll find them just in my pocket yeah. or find them okay i thought i'd just find them on the ground like i didn't think they were lost yeah. like that so i was just like calm how how far is the walk i only went on a short walk it was maybe like 10 minutes so i retraced my steps well maybe like 15 20 minutes okay i retraced them once i couldn't see them i retraced them twice i couldn't see them that's when i started freaking out and i was like oh my god what am i gonna do um and then i realized i thought <laughs> thought I might have dropped them in front of a school. Yeah. Which was, <laughs> like I said, like, I just didn't want to be, like, out here, like, looking around this school. I, I don't know, like, with kids. I don't know, I, I feel like, like you <laughs> deep it too much. Like, I would be, I would literally be, no, it's not that deep. No, because they were all out. Like, anyway. Yeah, it's too much. So I was like, let me just let it be. Um, but, yeah, it's just really annoying because now everyone knows how dragged the whole locksmith situation is like it's so expensive it's so exp- i lost my keys like uh in april mm. i lost the first set like a while ago and i didn't even i don't even know what happened to those keys i think my sister used it and she just never gave it back yeah. and then the second the second um the one i always had i dropped it mm. in you know the elevator yeah like the, i just looked at it and i'm just like are you serious <laughs> and there is no like you can't do anything about it you actually have to call because like certain keys in, with the apartments you can't just copy the key mm. like it's a it's a proper key it's yeah. really different yeah. so I, I ended up paying like 400 and something dollars just to replace like two keys and two fobs yeah. and it took them about it took them a minute it took them like i want to say two three weeks so I could get, I had a garage key that could get me into the building. But not into your, not into my apartment. Oh my gosh. And then that was a whole situation. But anyway, we we made it through. Yeah. It's just like, it's just dragged. It's so dragged. I'm so drained. So I don't know. I, today was just like missions, like yeah. trying to, because I'm doing whatever I can to avoid paying for a locksmith. So I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to. But do you feel like you're going to have to pay for one? Bitch, I, don't I don't even know, know what, what we came to at it's the end a, it's it just <laughs> depends like i'm trying to it's i'm trying to just like get them to send me a new key um but you know there's only so long i can like not have access to my apartment yeah. so i'm obviously staying with you tonight yeah. but i can't just like it's so funny Rahel was like it's international what is it French, friendship, friendship day. day yeah i'm like hey <laughs> sleep over <laughs> we're gonna have s- anyway it's, it kind of worked out yeah, yeah, it did. It was, I'm that's why make I was like, Love cool. Island with me tonight. Oh my god, we have a Love Island marathon. Have some wine. <laughs> have some food. Everything but Love Island. Turn so. up to Love Island. <laughs> no, it's actually really like, uh, it's annoying because you're not as invested as me. Yeah, that's why I feel like I'm not gonna be like as into it. But I don't know. I think it, like it's like you said, it's fun when you're watching it with someone. Oh yeah. So like I'll, I don't know. 
I'm like homeless at this point, so yeah. obviously I have no choice. <laughs> you don't have a choice, babe. We're watching Love Island. <laughs> Oh my god, alright, yeah. should we get into this week's bitter and sweet? Yeah. I'm gonna let you kick it off. Oh uh, yes, I'm gonna kick it off with the bitter. So there's actually like so many um I feel like there's so many online things happening at the moment that mm. it's just like ugh. There's a lot of pop culture yeah. stuff that I was thinking of talking about, but I landed on uh, I am just like so sick and tired of and I think everyone is, but it's like I've just seen one too many videos of men uh, specifically obviously like a lot of black men men with podcasts mm. like you know the whole thing just talking so much shit like it's tiring and it's actually starting to like i mean it's easy for me like i've i feel like i'm very remember that episode that we did on um kevin samuels and yeah. it was like you know it wasn't it was the other guys that said it was that kevin samuels or um the oh what's the podcast called the ones that jumped on the australian fresh and fit or fresh and fit, fit and fresh yeah, or yeah, yeah, fresh and fit. anyway i used to be like so triggered by these yeah. men but now i'm just like please shut up yeah just sh- like literally i scroll and it's like this is why i hate black women it's like okay mm. or like um women want to talk about not needing men who's gonna like at 2 a.m. when some and an intruder comes, who's going to keep you safe? It's like, <laughs> it's like, just shut or up. It's like, I remember this, this, I saw this video of this black guy. I think it was this, this week. And he was like, um, talking about how illegitimate the feminist movement is like in general. Yeah. Cause his whole point is like, men have invented everything. He's like, why do women, like how are women going to claim that they want independence when, you know, this, th- men invented like who's gonna ha- how do you think you would have been able to drive around in those cars that a man invented or like just all he just had this list of stuff and yeah. in my mind i'm like and then he's showing pictures of like all these white men and i'm like are you dumb like do you not see that there's no black men there like there's a reason that a lot of men invented things that we use it's because they're the only ones that were allowed in their room also there's and a that lot includes of, there's a black lot of men proof that um like whether it's black people mm. or women or whatever it is but other people created the invention and then Straight it was just up. kind of like co-signed by yes. this other person who or like someone else just claims the blueprint or the pattern whatever it's called mm. you know so i don't think it's just not li- the problem with these people right because i'm not going to say like one it's not all men let's just clarify that yeah because it isn't there's a lot of, of course it's not i know it's just that these men are the loudest men yeah and there's Okay, this whole thing that I've been realizing now, and I'm sure you know this, but it's it's now about, like, with all this content coming out, it's not about what people are saying anymore. It's yeah. literally about how they're saying it. Yeah. And there's so much content that's just rubbish on yeah, TikTok, online, okay. but it's just people speak with so much conviction mm-hmm. and they speak with so much, like, just like energy and kind of like they make it sound like it's factual they uh, they 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 make it seem like they know exactly what they're talking about they're well versed in this topic and so why wouldn't they be right you know what i mean and it's not a discussion this is literally you in front of your camera your little tripod and your light just saying these things Mm. no one else is there to like combat what you're saying so Mm. what pisses me off is how far it goes Mm. and i'm reading the comments and a lot of people are like it'll get him off because the video you were talking about, it was a man saying how younger women can keep a man because they know how to like yeah, give. give good good yeah. give like give blah, 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 give good head whatever all that stuff you know, which is just like it's just disgusting content period like you're an old man you're a grown man talking about how younger women are better like do you not understand first of all he's just like gives predator vibes like freak, but also it's like the people in the comments are dragging him, mm. but there's another side of people who are obviously watching this and thinking like oh. Maybe this, maybe, maybe I need to like learn how to do this. Maybe I need to be more, and that's the issue because there's so many young people that are like jumping on, reading it, or listening to this thing, thinking, "Oh, he's like a black man. He's a grown man. He's someone that I would want to be with physically. Mm. Maybe I need to start being like this." And that's mm. the problem with these people. Yeah, exactly. It's like what you said. They say it with like so much conviction yeah. and so much um, like confidence. Where it's like, if you don't. Because even, like, it's not even the blatantly disgusting ones, like that guy that was saying that thing about girls that give head or whatever. Mm. It's, sometimes it's, like, more subtle, where it's, like, you need to, you can look at these videos for face value, and 
if you don't care about um you know the rights of women or you're just kind of like passively watching it you can very much be convinced by what these people are saying Mm. and it's not always sometimes it's like very discreet like the hidden racism or the hidden like misogyny Mm. in what's there and like that's what makes me so frustrated when I watch it because I'm like I and there's a there's a lot of them that it's like the majority of the comments are just people like agreeing with with what they're saying mm. and i think there's a, like a side of like tiktok and twitter and whatever that we 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 just don't have access to where these videos are like out there just mm. being consumed i think about like my nephew and stuff i remember when i um the last time i saw him he w- he's like 12 but he was like watching videos of andrew tate at, as a joke mm. but it's like how much of that and he's just finding them on youtube mm. it's just coming up and it's like how much of that is like um i think it's like he he, he know like it's obviously clickbait and he understands that it's like triggering and whatever but it's like this is like a 12 year old boy yeah of course you know it's like this stuff just shouldn't be and out also there he probably doesn't fully understand that it's clickbait like there's a yeah. lot of guys that look at people like andrew tate especially young boys that are like okay because he's kind of he he's like not that he's encouraging them, but he's mm. trying to give, like, instill a sense of confidence or something mm. in men. That's, like, the point of his, con- his content. Yeah. But it's in the most, like, just, I don't know, harmful, misogynistic, gross way. So I feel like I can't expect, like, a 12-year-old to get that. Yeah, and there'd be so many people yeah, in that yeah. boat. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's, like, it is, like, it's not always, like, that blatant. I think it's scary when it's, like, kind of under the surface as mm. well. But I don't know. I'm just, like, really over it. Like, I'm genuinely over it. And I hate, like, um, I think it's because I engage sometimes because I think about it with, with for, like, the podcast. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I need to, like, I need yeah, to like say content. this so yeah, I can, yeah, like, talk yeah, about yeah. this shit that's out there. That it keeps coming you know? up on your but algorithm. But, like, when it comes up on my stuff, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't watch this. It makes me depressed. Like, But do you think it's about people stopping or about like the public mm. becoming more like ob- not observant but what's the word like you're able to kind of decipher okay this is just like trash mm. or this is someone that is like just making shit up from dinner or this is like something i should be taking is it up to us to be more like um i'm looking for a word mm. but like literally just be able to kind of spot out what's right and what's wrong yeah i think that there should be more platforms that like debunk these types of videos like not even just specifically the videos but even the concepts behind them because like again like i i really do feel feel like we get a lot of information through social media just like toxic shit but sometimes people can say this stuff in the name of like religion Mm. or in the name of like you know their philosophies or whatever it is Mm. so it's like the internet is the internet Mm. and it's like a free space you know what i mean it's like they uh, they obviously try to censor it and do all that but then i'm saying like when does it become a a, not an us problem but more Mm. about like how we uh like we just become more discerning Mm. over it being like a problem of the person posting the content yeah no i know i don't know i think that it's like we shouldn't we should just be careful obviously like what we consume but it's like anyone can post anything that they want that's the problem that's what i'm saying it's like uh, and i feel like for so long people have been saying like we're always trying to like come for the people that post it and that's fair and i feel like we can keep doing that Mm. but it's also like i think that's out of our control so i think it should be more about like what we can control and that's kind of like what we filter what we listen to yeah yeah i don't know yeah no i know what you mean it is a sticky one yeah because but you can't like all of this stuff this content's always going to be out there Mm. So at the same time, I feel like we need to like see it, clock what's so like more people should talk about what's so like, which I, I, I see a lot of videos as well of people just taking the piss out of these guys. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I know a lot of people understand that it's just like bullshit. Yeah. Like I think maybe the majority do, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's, it's just gross to even have on the feed. Like I just don't like it at mm. all. Um, so yeah, that's like my bit, but I've been trying to, um, I've like 
it, my content isn't like that. I was just, I just went through a time where I was like seeing oh, all nah, these yeah. videos and then like. TikTok is scary. Like tic- the thing is, I like and hate TikTok because it's like, they it, you can like switch up your algorithm so quickly. Mm. Have you noticed? Yeah. Like so quickly. Yeah, so or quick. you can just end up like with a lot of trash. So yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas Instagram is, you can't. Instagram takes a minute. Instagram is so slow. So sick of it. Yeah. Like so jacked, I know, but I'm on it the most for some reason. Instagram, yeah, it's so weird. I find that really weird that I'm on just because it's like, what content are you looking at? Yeah, to be literally, on Instagram? what are you looking? I at? don't know. It's, I, I mean, like, like obviously with bittersweet. <laughs> yeah, with bittersweet, but then I'm just like on it. I almost just, I don't know. I f- catch myself just on Instagram, but TikTok is better. Yeah. Well, recently I did actually like start because it was like when I was getting really over my feed and whatever. But on Instagram, I liked all these like meme pages. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that I waste so much time on. I love it so much. Just like dumb ass memes. So it's like, yeah, this Instagram is, is it's working so for me at the moment. Yeah, I'm just like, eh, with Instagram. I don't know. My suite of the week was uh, pretty simple. That's I had right. like a really nice, I had a really nice weekend, actually. Mm. I, what did I do on Friday? I know I had like a really wholesome movie night. Well, um, Love Island Marathon with one of my friends. Love it. And it was just like, vi- it was more the vibe. Like we just had our wine, we mm. had our snacks. We had like, it was just wholesome. Yeah. We haven't like caught up properly in a long time. So that was really, nice. just really, really nice. Mm. And then yesterday, obviously we got to record with someone we've been trying. Guys, stay tuned for that episode. It was just a nice week. Mm. We got to record with someone. Then I saw the family. Mm. Um, but yeah, my suite is very simple. Just like seeing... Oh, what the hell? I can't believe I <laughs> missed out on Friday's sweet, which was a, a very, like, so my best friend, my high school best friend took me out and it was like for my birthday. Oh. It was a belated birthday, but it was 15 years of our friendship. Oh my God. This is our 15th year. And I'm like, shout out to us, Casey, period. <laughs> <laughs> I love Casey. Like, she's just like that girl for me, you know? We yeah. grew up together from like the age of 11. Mm. So when she was like, is it's 15 years this year i was like what i just you don't even Whoa. clock you know what i mean yeah i'm like this is definitely my like for life for life sis is that your longest friendship she's my longest she is yeah yeah mm. obviously like my cousins were my my friends as well <laughs> like i was always like i'm always with my cousins um yeah. but like in terms of friendships yeah casey's like my longest friend mm, that's which is beautiful. crazy that that years is wild yeah i feel like that's like that is forever at that point it's yeah, like at this point, you guys we, we were saying that. It's like, there's no way that it's not going to be forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless some, sh- you we- some <laughs> shit goes down. Oh. Uh, but like, no, we have a very healthy, healthy and loving relationship. So it was mm. just cute. It, it was a friendship weekend for me. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I love that because we've been talking so much about I know. I friendship. Know so it's like coming up. Yeah, it's like really weird. I guess it's like you're manifesting it or something. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, guys, it's International Friendship Week, Friendship Day. Tell friendship your friend, month. tell your friend you love them. Mm. You know what I mean. Send them a cute message. Take them out for dinner. Do something sweet because yeah, good friends don't come easy. They don't. They as we know, don't. they actually don't. Especially so. the older that you get. Oh my days. Straight up. All right. Sh- shall we move on to this week's topic? Yes. Okay. So this week's topic, guys, is we're gonna. It's it's the theme is therapy, but not the way that you think it's going to be. Mm. So there's a lot about you know the the phrase therapy speak, um, and how we yeah how we use the language that we hear in therapy, Mm. um, and try to apply it to real life scenarios. And it's not always appropriate. It's not always giving, and it's (laughs) always a bit like you know what I mean. It's kind of like it's giving selfish. Um, so yeah, we kind of wanted to talk about all of that. Yeah. So do you want to kick it kick off? off? Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, so I guess like I wanted to start by, so I just feel like in the most amazing way, mm. uh, therapy and mental health, um, uh, self care mm. has, it's so mainstream now. Mm. And I obviously like, that's incredible because I, I remember even like, um, a, c- a couple of years ago when we started this podcast we had a whole episode on like th- the taboo around mental health yeah. and like ethnic households which is still obviously a thing but I feel like we've like come so far in the past mm. 
um, couple years in mm. community. And there's like people like polar practice yeah. and um, shoot a shoot, shoot, a shoot yeah. spreading the good word. And 100%. we love that. And it's like, it, it's like the conversation isn't about the taboo. No. The nature of therapy anymore. It's more about like how you can access, access therapy it. and yeah. like what, it, like what, the process looks like and mm. um it's it's more yeah like actually going into what therapy is mm-hmm. what it's like like everyone just seems so much more open to it yeah and, and i and yeah. i really feel like like since covid as well like there's been a lot of um as as horrendous as that was it was a time for people to reflect and like there was a lot of self-care talk yeah. a lot of like um mindfulness a lot of uh just a lot of really great um, conversations around how to take care of yourself because we all had to slow down. Yep. Um, but I think from that, <laughs> there's yeah. obviously been, there's like, there's a, there's a other side of everything. Like life is never like just bliss. It, like everything is never just like what you it do is. These like, and then you're <laughs> yeah, good there's to like go. an effect. Nah. So like, yeah, I guess like, I, I was, I thought that we could like discuss some of the kind of downsides to this kind of uplifting of uh mental health and therapy but um to start like just wanted to kind of talk about our own like little journeys yeah um around therapy around therapy Mm -hmm. around like mental health even talking about it understanding it um kind of like over the past i don't know I guess Three literally from years. I feel like the when I've like started thinking about therapy was probably on like even mental health. Mm. Obviously we did that that we did when we first spoke about it was yet yeah, 4 years ago yeah. but then I think when I when I started to think about it um and apply it to myself. I think there's two different things because you can know about a topic yeah. and talk about it and it be like okay this is a topic that just kind of exists and I'm I'm like accepting of it and whatever. Mm. And then when you start to think about how it applies to you is like a whole different thing. thing yeah. And I remember when I first started, um, I don't know, like I feel like there was a point in my life, probably around 23, when I was like really experiencing anxiety, like when it started for me. Mm-hmm. And like I didn't think I knew what that feeling was, but it was kind of like this like, not panic, but almost just like st- like intense stress all the time about, you know, life and like what I'm doing and da And it was just constant. And then... I finished uni and I couldn't get a job and it was just like constant like that feeling of like what am I doing (laughs) what are we doing should I be making bank right now how am I going to plan for my life am I even like all these thoughts are constantly like this overwhelming stress and then like the expectations that I had from people around me Um, And then just like that added to my stress when really, yeah, there was all of that. And I remember talking to you about wanting to start therapy and being like, I just don't know, like I want to, but like, I don't know. I don't want my family to know about it at all. Like I was so private. Mm. I'm pretty sure you were the only person I told. Mm. And I was so like, like I just didn't know. I wanted to make sure no one in my family knew I was going to therapy. Mm. Um, And that obviously that whole process of like, convincing myself to start took a minute mm-hmm. and I, d- I started to put it off started to put it off and then I didn't want to go through the process of like mm. getting a mental health plan and like all of that stuff it just made me feel like okay therapy is not for someone who is in my situation yeah. if I'm in and it's like I, that all that the whole idea of like feeling like you're weak or feeling like yeah you're not like it was all of that, you know what I mean? Obviously, our parents, being someone from that comes from, like, an African household, my parents were refugees. My parents, you know, had real, tra- like, trauma that they went through in their life. And when I compare it, mm. I'm like, girl, mm. girl, this is not, like, this is not trauma. What you're yes. going through is not anxiety. What you're going through is not, like, it's something you can get over. You know what I mean? And I don't know, it's like... That is still like a battle in my mind sometimes, but it's always relative. Like your experience is relative to your your own life, you know? Mm. And once I accepted that, then I went through the mental health, like then I went through the process and I was like, okay, let me, let me, sh- let me try this therapy thing. Yeah. And I, I went through the process, got the check, couldn't find a therapist and was like, seeps, 
this i went I through shout out to like polar that. psychology polar yeah. practice for their directory because i checked that out went through it it was a really busy time for therapists yeah. so was a lot of people after COVID? Mm, like kind of out, just out, in general you know how it was kind of lingering for a minute yeah <laughs> it was yeah. like that it was like COVID's like over but it's not over yeah. so it was around there and i was trying to get a therapist and like i think two or three were like i'm busy so i'm like seeps seeps see, <laughs> this is this is work like trying to find a therapist is work especially in australia yeah um like being a black woman like trying to find the right person and then i stopped and stopped for a long time until a friend of mine told me that their friend recommended a therapist mm. and they rec- they they referred them this therapist so i was like pass, pass. <laughs> let's <laughs> let, let's share therapist let's do this you know like let me let me try this thing yeah. so i tried it and then the first session was like it was good like the thing is it's interesting like therapy is not so I've, I've been to therapy i tried the sessions with this lady and it was good it just felt like a bit like random a yeah. part of me felt random like one of my you know what i mean and you go through and i think it was because of my approach with mm-hmm. this thing i was kind of like okay i'm gonna go here and this person's gonna just fix my issues i don't know i think i think it was just my openness to it and just like it was a mix of both and they say like I've heard so many times that if you don't find the right therapist or the right match the first time, like you should just always look like um, Tigis from Polar Practice. One thing she said was choosing a therapist is like dating and like you're on hinge and you swipe, 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 swipe until you find the right one. But sister, like who has the time? Yeah. And also it's like, (laughs) it's so intense because it's like you go into this session, like basically like emotionally like offloading yeah and it's uh, the thing is it's like from i don't even <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. that's the hardest thing about it because it's like you go in and you're talking to this person yeah. and they're like you're like what do you want me to tell you because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things that have been happening in my life so what do you want me to tell you you know what i mean and yeah. that that's where i'm like okay i need them to know this, this. It's, it's just it's a process i think and i think like yeah if i i the, the way i went in was um close at the start then i stopped going then i started going again so overall i think i went to like seven sessions with this Mm. person and it was just very like it was good like i think towards that when i was more open i felt like there was i had a different experience Mm. but what i learned from that process and that whole experience is that i have to go in with an open mind and i have to go in with um like i'm going to this i'm going to therapy for a reason I'm not going because I just like feel like it and it's just vibes obviously it's money mm. so <laughs> at the end of the day you know you can you can identify in yourself like whether you need it or not if you want some support if you're feeling a type of way and you just don't want to keep offloading on your friends or you don't feel like you're getting the right um information like these are professionals you know what I mean so when I started to not go in with so much I guess like fear or even just like um not sus- I was a bit like just without holding back. Yeah. I think I got the most out of it. Yeah. And then yeah, after hearing um after hearing that you need to like keep looking like sometimes you just feel the connection. Mm-hmm. I decided to switch and like go to a different like therapist. Mm-hmm. And girl, it makes a difference. Yeah. It does. Like when you find the person that, you know, that you feel like you can connect with, mm-hmm. it can make such a difference, but honestly my experience was not easy like i'm still even in this process of trying to figure out Mm. figure out the whole process you know but i do feel like and i know we're going to get into like more of this Mm. i feel like for for me that the support that it's given me is kind of being able to identify identify certain things in my life that i wouldn't be able to like put a like maybe certain things happen and it causes me stress Mm. or maybe i'm I'm I want to be more like this Mm. and I'm trying and I'm battling with whatever I'm going through now but not I'm not real it's like it's helping me recognize and highlight like the things that are happening in my life what I am doing Mm. and like just making it more structured in my mind I guess I don't know but it's it's it is that and I think like yeah I think sometimes you just need someone to kind of guide you through your own thoughts and whatever's going on in your head yeah of course I think like um absolutely everything that you said it's so it's like such a again like therapy works in different ways for different people Mm. and um I think that like yeah you obviously need to find 
someone like I've had friends who have gone through like a similar thing where um, it's just it's a challenge to find the right therapist and I think that like people like underestimate how hard that is especially um, you know like financially mentally like it's like it's a lot and it can be a lot to even get to the point of um, like looking for like you know reaching out for help mm. you know so i think that that's um yeah it's like a it's a com- complicated process but um i think for me like what i've been noticing lately and i think like social media like so i have um i think it was like yeah during covid that i started to really get into trying to like actually take care of myself mm. <laughs> like yeah i just feel like weirdly like before then the concept of like self-care and um all of that was kind of foreign Mm. like I didn't I kind of felt like I don't know like maybe it was more like just autopilot or something Mm. but it was I was just going through life and then I just kind of got to a phase where I was like okay cool it was like a revelation Mm. like once people started talking about mental health and wellness and all of these little things that mm. you can do to take care of yourself, like I was like loving it, you know, and yeah. I, and, and it made a, a huge difference. I remember I read some like great self-development books yeah. and, um, you know, like I just got into like, I was like, okay, let me get into journaling. Let me get into yeah. meditating. Let me get into walking yeah. let me get into anything that i can do to make myself feel better which is like again i think it's great yeah but i just find like i think that social media has a tendency to really like glamorize this idea of self-care, self-care. 100 percent. and i think it can be like really isolating for some people who don't feel like they have like the money or the means or the time mm. to be able to do like what um To be able to, like, do what we see as, like, what is self-care online. You know, like, you know these videos of people, like, waking up? And I tried it. At, like, 5 a.m. You know what I mean? Like, I I know. Even, like, that book, um, Seven uh, Healthy Habits or whatever. Like, just a lot of of them. It's, like, I've just been, like, thinking about, like, who can live like that? You know, it's, Mm. like, it's not sustainable. What I'm getting at is, like, I think that we need to find... We, we shouldn't look at these uh, these kind of I- even monetized mm. ways like brands like Goop, big wellness mm. companies that try and s- like kind of sell us this idea of what well-being and self-care means. Mm. And I am just saying like I feel like I kind of I got caught up. I got swept up yeah. in that a little bit. <laughs> you know, like I rode the wave yeah. and now I'm at a place where I'm like let me chill like let me not feel like i have to like wake up at 5 a.m and like go for an hour walk and um journal every day and eat like this type of food Mm. and all of these things that it's just like it's not sustainable for me it might be sustainable for For you you, but it's like i might be able to do it for six months but I'm not going to be doing it forever, period. Like and it's not, the thing is, it's <laughs> not, like, I feel like we need to understand that it's not a one-size-fits-all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people need to understand what the, like, what is the intention behind all these, like, practices and then find a way that makes it work for you. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, meditation is about being still and being present, yeah. you know what I mean? So some people, like, close their eyes and breathe in and breathe out and try to focus on their breathing. Mm-hmm. Some people like um i remember my friend used to tap on her hand while she's sitting still and it made her like you know some people work out work out and focus on their breathing there's just different ways to doing it and like i, s- I struggle with meditation like i have to yeah. try I'm just five minutes every morning got this you know and i'm like it's the hardest thing it is so hard to sit there for me anyway and like just sit there and like but then i have moments where i'm present in other in other like times of my life whether it is journaling or like i don't know going for a walk and just like i don't know i think you have to find a way that like you can you can see what the practice is and then like apply it what was the other one that you said there was like eating eating healthy or like um what was the other one like yeah journaling eating healthy like self-care just in general in terms of like taking you know like 
like little self care things like ma- doing your hair or like yeah. mani- manicures, pedicures, taking a nice long bath. Like I just think that there's like that all of those things are great, but there's like this this and I saw it, I actually th- I thought about it. I've been thinking about it for a while, obviously, mm. but it was like this um, video I saw online, and this girl was like, you know, like I feel like the self which is like true the wellness industry the self-care industry like it's been completely like um uh what's the word uh monetized obviously like these big corporations like they're trying to like sell us a version of um of of happiness that involves just like Mm. you know paying for certain things or like i don't know i just think that we're like we're, we we kind of like uh like sold this version of self-care that is not inclusive of everyone mm. and i think that if you don't fit into that then it can feel like shit like um when i don't like quote unquote take care of myself it's like i shouldn't have to constantly just be like on on it you know mm. and no one should and that's o- that's just okay you yeah. know what i mean it's, it's just like accepting that because like i do think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to just be the best versions of ourselves mm. all the time and it's like it's just not possible like it's, it's not but i feel like it's not because of the way that we've been sold mm. self-care like you know what i mean like getting like, like you said getting your hair done mm. getting your nails done putting on a face mask putting on a hair mask like going for a run going yeah. for a walk making sure you have like healthy food making sure you're all those things but i feel like there's a way to do it that is like accessible mm. and that's not like mentally taxing or you don't f- it doesn't have to feel like oh, okay i'm doing yeah. this for it's just it's it's about like putting things into practice that make sense to you and mm. if it's just like you know eat or sleeping earlier or like there are, there are f- cheap and free ways to look after yourself mm. it's the way that we've been like scammed mm. into doing it so that it seems like it's a you know what i mean like you have to do it in this way yeah. you have to in go out in a specific way in, like specific in this way specific when it's time like frame it's not that yeah. it's like eating like cooking at home is like a practice of self-care mm. sleeping on time or sleeping earlier is a practice of like self-care practice literally just like chilling out and listening to music and not like indulging in social media is Mm. self-care you know what i mean seeing your friends Mm. is self-care it's anything that will make you feel like like yeah good (laughs) literally good like just fills you up Mm. and i think that it's because it's been like marketed as like oh self-care is like you know Mm. therapy and this and that like no you can pilates Pilates would be the death of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really thought I was going to be that girl. Absolutely not. I'm cancelling my membership. Yeah. I'm not paying $50 a week to when I can YouTube and just be in my living room. Do you know what I mean? Like, you have to find ways that make that work for you. Yeah. But I completely understand what you mean. Yeah, I'm just saying, I think that's a message should, that should be out there. That more. should be, yeah. And I, I think that people should show. And I want to talk about some of the, the ways, the other ways that have worked for us mm. that do you like fill our cups and kind of give you that feeling of um you know mental wellness and well-being without it just being this kind of like social mediaized version of, of what like it means yeah. to be like taking care of yourself yeah and um yeah i just think that like and and that's kind of been my journey i feel like at this at the beginning of 2020 and stuff like i did um kill myself to to take care of myself mm. and i kept it was like dieting you know it's like yo-yo wellness mm. <laughs> Shut up. some <laughs> some months i would be like on my um and it's not that hard you know i realize it's not that hard to just like meditate for 10 minutes a day or um you know do those little things but i just think like i i personally tend to get swept up into um just like doing a lot at the same time like working out reading meditating um yeah eating well all of these things and it's just like doing it all at once is overwhelming Mm. so i just think that it's like yeah i've been trying to find like little more like little sustainable things that um i can continue (laughs) and that will uh yeah make me feel good in the in the long run i guess it's just like form like little habits and whatnot but i just think that like wellness in general it's like it's just there's been so much like 
people there's been so m- like people take advantage of the industry you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i think there's a lot of scammers out there 100%, i think there's yeah. a lot of like um you know even online like toxic people kind of taking advantage of this new wave of um well-being and and mental health mm. and i just think like because they can cap it like i guess people can just capitalize off it and they're just like yep like this they make is make what's a like a thing right now but I know I, I literally I got sucked into the whole morning routine thing and you get <laughs> up and the thing is I'm like because I'm a morning yeah. person like you know what I mean I'll wake up and I'll do these things and I remember at one point I was like trying to follow someone's morning routine and it was like wake up um, like meditation mm. then the affirmations then a prayer you know shower then you like have some like breakfast then sit down and read a book I'm like what morning <laughs> Like what morning? Who do we have the same morning? Because when are you doing those things? Yeah, I couldn't understand it, and I tried. <laughs> I tried, but I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to wake up and like do ten million things. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think it was just, it's like, it's literally just like altering things and making them work for you. Yeah. And I feel like the, that's the problem. Like sometimes we look at how people are doing things, and we're like, all right, cool. I'm gonna. I'm going to do that exact same thing and like hopefully it will just work on me and then you force it and force it and force it and it's just that's not it Mm. so maybe there's a version of that that will work for you for me it was like okay let me just wake up and like if I just go for a quick walk like I'm happy with that you know what I mean I'm content I can listen to a podcast I can listen Mm. to some music and just like come back and start my day Mm. you know for some people it's different it's like okay maybe I'll just do the affirmations and I'll just maybe it's none of that you know what I mean maybe it's just like I wake up silent I'm not on social media I get up and I just start my day slow Mm. I feel like that's why I'm saying it's important to understand why this person is doing what is the intention behind all these things it's Mm. to be present it's to like make sure the, f- the thoughts that are in your head in the morning are positive and the, c- the things that might just come in, just mm-hmm. like intrusive thoughts, you know what I mean? It's, I feel like you, if you look at the intention and then try to figure out a way that that makes the most sense to you, you know what I mean? Like try to do it, figure out a practice that makes the most sense to you Yeah. and not try to like just take kind of like what, imitate take what, what other people, other people are doing. Are doing. Cause yeah. I feel like that's the biggest issue. Like we see all these examples, there's so many examples mm. and we just try to use those examples on ourselves and that's mm. fair, but it's a trial and error thing as well. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, it's yeah. kind of sold. It's like packaged and it's sold to us in that way as well. You know, like this is what you need to do. This is like what self care looks like, yeah. all of these things. But I guess it's just what you said. Like everyone is, an individual different things work for different people Mm. maybe sometimes you don't want to do anything and that's fine you know so it's just like taking and just not feeling guilty if you're not kind of like living that uh that kind of that life that's out there that is that people think self-care is i mean it's also like very much like it's catered towards a very privileged lifestyle if you think about people like uh, um who are living in like tougher situations no they're not going to be able to wake up at 5 a.m and like you know, it's like making you money hustling you think they know like about meditation like <laughs> yeah what's what i'm saying it's, it's like not or like they have their own way of doing it like yes. therapy comes in different ways you know what yeah. i mean like i was saying you can have a gathering with your friends and chill mm. just like having that time is therapeutic for a lot of people yeah. and so that's when it's like all right look where does it fit into the life that i'm already living like how can i do it so that it makes sense yeah um i was listening to this podcast and the woman on the podcast was talking about how um how she has like the time she just had a baby and she's like how do i like the question was like how do you have the time to do all the things you're doing you know Mm -hmm. and she was like you know before i was a mother like I was able to wake up and just like I had those two hours to get ready and do like extra, I don't know, makeup or do something crazy, like fun with my hair or like try on different outfits and da 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 da. Just she was like, the process of doing a lot of things was a lot easier because I only had myself to think about. Yeah. And now that I have a child, um, there's just a million things that need to be done. I don't have time for those things, right? And then she was talking about how, you know, so they were asking her, like, how do you do that? And she was like, everything comes to my house my nail technician comes to my house my um whatever like food delivery comes everything like she did a podcast she does her podcast in her house people come to her house and she pays obviously she pays off all these people and like the reason i'm saying this is because sometimes you look at what other people are doing and they make it seem so easy Mm. and they make it seem like you know 
this is how I'm, I'm, I'm able to juggle blah, 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 blah. Because um, oh, in my day, this is what I'm doing. And you look at it and you try to apply the same thing and it's not working out for you. But you don't understand the circumstances are different. Like this lady was able to pay off every single person. That's mm. You know what I mean? To make her life easier. Mm. You might not have that luxury. So that's not going to be the same solution for you. Yeah. Or like their life won't look the same. For you. you have to, it has to be relative to your yeah. own life. <laughs> yeah that's such Please. a good that's exactly like right what that's it like is such i was like damn example. i can't wait to get to that point <laughs> manifesting Girl, I, I just think like people <laughs> need to be more honest on the internet but also whatever like i guess we just need to like be a bit more vigilant when watching these types of videos and like li- having that type of mindset where it's like okay like just because it works for them like who knows yeah, what supports or privileges they have to be able to have that or if it just doesn't feel right to me maybe like okay you yeah know, let me try something else or yeah exactly yeah. Um, but the other thing, yeah, I guess we wanted to talk about was, um, this idea of therapy speak. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just keeping in like the theme of like (laughs) mental health and wellness and all of that. Like for people that don't understand therapy speak. Oh yeah. I think I've got, do you have a definition? I actually do. Yeah. yeah. But maybe like just, I was just going to like, okay. (laughs) Literally say my version of it, but if you have a definition, let's use that. So This is weaponizing of therapy speak is when someone uses psychological concepts to to control their partner under the guise of enlightenment, enlightenment, enlightenment. Mm. Therapy speak refers to the adoption of psychological jargon without fully grasping its meaning or purpose. At its worst, therapy speaks allows us to arm ourselves with language that masquerades as a... um, as a kind of more empathetic form of communication, while in reality it is weaponized to excuse our most selfish choices. So that's like a very intense like it's definition. A very intense but one, I think yeah. like but yeah, th- that's a version of it. And I think because when I was looking into it, I was looking into it more in terms of yeah, like weaponizing therapy speak. Because yeah. I think like there there can be people in friendships and relationships that can use yeah a term like boundary or a term like um, gaslighting Hoxie. in a way to just kind of like, even like gaslight the other person. Like you Straight can call up, someone a gaslighter, gaslight but it's like you're <laughs> gaslighting me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> that's like where the like kind of like, um, yeah, the nuance of it all comes in. So that was like the definition that I got up. And it's not just with your partner, like it's with friends. It can mm. be with like anyone really. But it's like when people, yeah, pretty much... So my, 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 obviously I have an issue with it because I feel like it, it, it also just, I think takes away from the meaning of the language or takes away from people that are actually trying to use it to help them. Um, it's just, it's like when people diagnose themselves with like random diagnosis, just based off your TikTok, you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, that sounds like me. You're taking away from people that actually have this. Yeah, it can like invalidate that. Yeah, experience. and you're invalidating it, or like making it seem like it's so, um, like it's just everywhere, or like we all have it, so it's you know we're all functioning with it or whatever. When really there's a version of it that's different to what you're experiencing just in your daily life, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so there was an article called um, "Is Yeah Is Therapy Speak Making Us More Selfish?" Yeah. and one example was from this girl, and it's her name is Kate Hakala, 34, and from New York. She once invited four of her friends to an intimate dinner at a pizza restaurant to celebrate her birthday. One friend showed up 25 minutes late. It was a a little rude, a little annoying, but not the end of the world. Hakala says, I feel like I was still very polite um, and warm towards her. After dinner dinner and a low-key visit to a bar, the night wrapped up early and Hakala went home. Close to midnight, the, the late friend called her. She says, I need to address this. You made me feel unsafe and unloved tonight. Mm. Hakala says, I went, excuse me. And she's like, yeah, your demeanor was a little off. And this has been building up for a while. And you made me feel really left out. And she's like, she had no idea what prompted this outburst on her on her birthday. Um, And she's like, I'm racking my brain to think to think. What did I do to make her feel this way? Like, was it the intimate dinner? Like, I didn't mm. do anything outside of inviting you to an intimate dinner. Mm. And basically, that's, like, an example of it. Like, you're mm. I feel unsafe. I feel unloved. Mm. Um, saying things like, I'm setting a boundary. Um, there was one example where the girl was like, um, we're going to have an alternative 
alternative plans today. I'm switching. I'm switching plans to an alternative plan. It's like HR speak. I want to have. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> I want to like. Yeah, I'm setting a boundary. It's yeah. literally like you're speaking to HR, and that's what I mean by like not not being able to create like genuine rel- yeah. a genuine relationship. Like if someone's always speaking to you like a robot. Mm. it's like i just want to be out of here like i want to stop talking to you you know and i think i think there's a way to like your friends are your friends or the people your loved ones are your loved ones so i think there's always you can always use this terminology to support you in whatever you're trying to say but i think they're also going to understand or they want they they're going to want to understand what you're Mm. going through you know what i mean so it's like about letting people in a little bit more Mm. and helping them see what you see rather than just kind of like this one-sided conversation where you put a boundary up Mm. and this person's now left with like they don't want to step on eggshells they don't know they're they're stepping on eggshells they don't want to like overstep and they don't know how to communicate to you without offending you it's literally one-sided you're literally telling them something and then walking away and not having any sort of like form of communication happening yeah yeah no i I think it's like one of those bitter like bittersweet things you know (laughs) something like therapy speak like it is i will always like um it's it's always a good thing to have like a vocabulary and be able to like name how you're feeling so Mm -hmm. that's why words like you know boundaries or trying to (laughs) or um you know toxic even even safe space all of these words we can use them to kind of characterize how we're feeling in a moment and what when what we need you know and that's obviously like why people go to therapy to kind of understand that or to understand if they have like narcissistic but tendencies that's the key or all of these things yeah it, that it's in therapy no the mm-hmm. key is that you're using this terminology to help mm-hmm. you understand what you're going through and i think that's what therapy is mm-hmm. like you might be experiencing an emotion you might be like there's a lack of emotion there's something that you want f- you want support in and therapy helps you understand these things and realize these things you don't then use the language i don't think it's necessary to use the language in real life i mean like you can't tell people like obviously what they can and cannot say like mm. it, it it is something that is like in our generation it's how we talk mm. it's like happening now you know what i mean but what i would say is that i think people need to like be more um you know like conscious of what they're saying it's like if you're gonna say if you're gonna call if i'm gonna call you toxic for um being late Mm. to a an event (laughs) or to my birthday yeah what have i like what about me makes me toxic you know what i mean or if i if i if i'm gonna call you a narcissist for um you know doing something like a, a bit annoying like, I'll just say that mm. y- you're a narcissist mm. yourself. But, or doing something a bit selfish. It's like, ha- have I ever done something selfish? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, like reflecting reflect on, your on your it. Yeah. Don't just, like, use these big, massive words without even, like, kind of understanding the context. Like, you can't just label someone a narcissist mm. or, like, labeling someone toxic or... Or just... Or cutting someone off. Cutting randomly. someone off, like yeah. You need to understand that you are as much in these relationships as that person is with you. Yeah. And they deserve... Like, where you're doing all the work and you're doing all this and whatever, you've come to these realizations, this person doesn't know. And when you yeah. hit them with it, it's like, have some grace for the people in your life and either help them understand mm-hmm. what your point of view is. Um, like, I don't know, just come come with a better approach. I just also feel like people when you're going to therapy your therapist only hearing your version Mm. of everything you're speaking about you know what i mean so there might be a different version out there if they're gonna they're obviously gonna be on your side they're gonna tell you all the things that not that you want to hear like obviously they'll challenge you and whatever it is but they're gonna tell you the things that make sense to your version of the story Mm. so then you're gonna go now and apply your version like the the solution from your version to another person and it might not be the same for them Mm. so it's like you can't like you just have to like i think it's about using it as a way to like start a conversation Mm. or use it as a way to kind of like yeah help you kind of create these boundaries but you should also I think you owe people in your life that explanation. Mm. You sometimes, know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes. So sometimes. Sometimes it's like you don't need to, of yeah, course. It's, like like it's really toxic. The situation. And if you, and if obviously if, if you are in, if you do have a, um, someone who, cause a lot of people have trauma 
and they have a, a genuine trauma response to what they're going through in life mm. and they can they should be able to say that mm. or like some people do need to tell people step away from my like you're crossing my boundaries mm. you know or um they're dealing with a narcissistic partner mm. and i think it's a good thing that there's I think it's only a good thing that there's language for that. But I think like, obviously it's just getting kind of like muddled by people misusing the words. Mm. But I think like that's better than what it used to be like, which is like no one spoke about anything. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's only like, I think it's, it's, it's like a complicated thing, but I just think people need to be careful just a bit about more like is. introspective of like what they're, s- what they're <laughs> saying. Or just like know what and you're give people yeah, a bit of grace, like you said, like, because we're not all and it's like even with going back to the whole like therapy theme like yeah you're not just because someone's a therapist also doesn't mean that they're like the best person in the world that knows absolutely everything Mm. so it's like these people i don't know like i think some people go to, to can go to a therapist and it's like they're actually yeah just being told what they want to hear mm. and that person is just kind of like how did that make you feel mm. <laughs> like some and people then you think will go to therapy yeah. word is like you know gold because there's there's almost like a dynamic i mm. think with a therapist when you're like okay this person is knows everything yeah do you know what i mean because yeah. you're going in you're like yeah. i'm looking for like when you go to a doctor, when you go to a dentist, when mm. you go to like whatever, they have the skills and they're they're helping you fix what you need to be fixed. They're mm. the experts here. So when you go to a therapist, you're just gonna apply that same logic. But really, they do. Of course, they're like trained. They know their practice. They probably like you know understand humans and relationships and all of that stuff way more than we do because they come across a lot of these like mm. situations. situations. Yeah. But also, it's like. It's so hard because it's also really nuanced mm, and I think very it's very subjective to what you what you told them. Mm. How, I just feel like and everyone everyone's way of doing therapy is very different. So I just feel like you need to still have a level of like discernment. <laughs> like you need to be able to go in and just like like I said be intentional with why you're go- like with your approach, but then like I don't know, make it apply. Like, also, like use that. There needs to be a sense of like independence in all of this as well. Like you need to be able to think for yourself, mm. and yeah, coming out of it, and also just don't, don't like you said this. Don't, don't use something that you don't. Don't use words you don't understand. <laughs> That's number because people use words, and it's like the meaning is oh, wrong. Like I think there was a word that I even heard. Um, someone say was um trauma trauma dumping mm. and or trauma bonding trauma bonding yeah. trauma bonding the the actual definition and what like 85 percent of people think is mm. it's completely different mm. do you know what i mean and yeah. i think with situations yeah, like that about, yeah. there are so many words that people might just gaslight and you might not know what it means you might just think okay this makes like someone's explained it like this so this is what it do fact check yeah, and some people might check. might use it just to like get the last word. Yeah, and you just like I, mean? I just feel like, but it's like yeah. that's like so counterproductive, and it's actually like taking us back, mm. you know, to do that. It's not, um, yeah, it's like really, yeah, it's not good. There's so m- that's it's a it's a huge topic, uh, you know, and I feel like there's a lot of episodes we could do on like each single thing that we've touched on, but I just think like there's been a whole. I think like yeah, it's just important to at least discuss these aspects as beautiful as things something like therapy or therapy speak or all of uh, you know well-being mental mm. health is it's like there's there's also sides. like there's always going to be the other side better to sweet thing better per <laughs> we'll add the l- i'll also like add the article um into mm. the description notes for people that are interested in reading more about it and just like understanding it a little bit more <laughs> anyways let's get into the dilemma of the week our specialty do you want me to read it yeah you can read it okay i love this one yes oh my gosh it's so relatable i just love how relatable a lot of our dilemmas are it's like are you me sending me like yeah (laughs) literally straight up because i get it um so this week the dilemma is my dilemma is this i've recently graduated got a good job and i'm planning on moving out of my family home i i feel so much random pressure to suddenly get a man and get married from my family contemplating getting another degree so they leave me alone they make me feel like i'm inadequate for not wanting what everybody else wants and say eventually i'll want to be married with kids i can't 
think of anything worse. Um, will time make them understand or should I continue to vouch for my sanity? What are your thoughts, sis? Oh my God, sis. Ah. I, feel like, I feel like it's a bit of both, like vouch for your sanity. Mm-hmm. Um, which for me, like I'm just interpreting that as like stand up for yourself. Um, but also like time will, mm. time will, will help them understand because um, I don't know where this person comes from originally and I don't think it matters but like obviously mm. parents can just have like parents can have their way especially like ethnic parents there's just always like this structure they just think like when you finish school everything is just going to work out the way yeah. that it's supposed to work out you know um, especially for the ones that are like you can't date no dating no nothing no blah blah blah, blah. but then it's like when I finish uni you want me to have you want me to be married you want me to be married, but you just told me I can't date my whole childhood. <laughs> so what's not even my adulthood, no boyfriends. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I just think like, I feel like what my understanding of this is and like how I try to help my underst- like help myself remain like calm okay. and sane is that it comes from a place of like, it comes from a place of fear for them mm-hmm. and a place of just like, um yeah just like they worry you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i think them like when i think about it same thing happened to me like i finished my degree and my dad was like are you gonna get your master's Mm -hmm. i said are you are you i crawled to the end of this degree (laughs) like i crawled like this there was so many times i hinted like can i drop out and this man was like it was he was just so like ready to argue with me i'm like man i tried it i really tried it rahel i sat there i'm like what do you think i'm gonna like drop out like i tried to make it a joke to see how he would react and he just like he got up so quickly he was lying down on the couch got up so quickly what drop out and i was like i'm just joking i'm just joking and then I went back to my room so depressed i was so depressed because i just hated this degree you know but, um, you know, thank God we educated out here, you know, whatever. Uh, we made it. We made it at the end of the day. But when, he, when I finished, he was like, are you going to get your master's? And then he's like, doctor it as a joke. But I'm like, are you like, it was, it's like, there's never going to be a point where they're going to be like, you know, it's all like you're, yeah. you're done. Yeah. And I think like, if you're not going to get a degree, it's, are you getting married? Have you bought a house? Have you done this? First of all, like shout out to her for finishing her degree. You know what I mean? Like it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of like, just like mental strength and determination to finish a degree. Mm. I don't care what people say. It is a lot, mm. you know? So you need to be able to like process the fact that you've done that. Mm. And then when it comes to your parents, I just think like, you have to take time to plan out what you want to do in your life and figure out what's important to you, whether that's like, you know, getting married or, you you know, you want to focus on your career or you want to like whatever it is by how, like whatever it is, travel more, like figure out what's important to you. And then it's literally, it's, it's, it's sounds so just like, I don't know, it's your life. Like it just sounds spoiled or whatever the word is, but, it, it's that. And I think once your parents understand that you are in control of what you want in your own life, they'll start to they'll start to back off. And if they don't, then it's just as simple as like it's it's you just have to keep repeating it to them and letting them know. That's how I've done it anyway. And I think, like I said, it comes from a place of fear. I think they're just worried and they feel like because they've had such a, a say in your life for so long. Mm when you've kind of been they want to just keep doing that for them it's like a force of habit or like it just makes sense you know Mm. and i think you need to be able to like put up a boundary you know we talk about boundaries (laughs) put up a boundary but like do it in a way where it's like you still involve them in what's happening depending on how close you are let them know like this is what my plans are this is how i'm gonna do it um i'm not interested in getting starting another degree i'm not looking for a partner right now like because this is what's happening or i want it to happen naturally Mm. and just relax because i got it under control and that's how i would approach it yeah yeah oh i think you just like killed it with that advice hon sister this has been a struggle in my life for a long time the girl who the person who sent this um yeah i understand you because this i've been fighting for my rights (laughs) i've been fighting my (laughs) long time my life for this and it it just gets to that point where all you can do is like 
yeah like explain it to them and then just try like it's just it's it's tough but i think it's just about like letting them know letting them in a little bit but Mm. also just being like this is i'm a grown adult and this is what i'm doing yeah absolutely i feel like with parents oh my gosh parents parents they don't know parents parents yeah they'll put so much pressure on you and to be honest like uh, yeah it's i think like you can't um I just, with my experience, like, I don't think that you can, I know that the pressure is a lot, but like what you said, like, you can't, like, live your life for your parents, because at the end of the day, they're probably not going to be, like, you know, parent like, they just, they're never fully happy with anything mm-hmm. that you do. Yeah. I don't know. That just they don't, like, they know. They always I feel just like want it's more. Like, yeah. They want more. And yeah. it's because of that, like, I guess, worry and care and everything, but it's like, I think you could tell them, like, you know, like. I'm the number one pop star in the world and parents will still be like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, like no, also a lot just, of it is them not understanding. Yeah. Like, it's a different time. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So I think that's why like when it comes to stuff like this, like pressure to especially get married and have kids, like I think you just put it in a category of like, I can't um, yeah, live my life to please them. I can just, you know, if it's a, if the pressure is really, really bad, I think that you can like, humor people a little bit you can just kind of like brush it off kind Mm. of ignore it like you don't have to if it's if it's too much you don't have to be like i don't want to do that with my life you can't tell me what to do you don't have to do that you can just kind of like um yeah just like humor it while not giving it too much time or too much thought because if that's at the end yeah obviously that's what she doesn't want to get married she doesn't want to have kids right now Mm. and there's no reason for you to feel like that's something that you should be doing with your life because um yeah that's something that your parents want you to do so yeah i guess you just have to like live your life for you live your life yeah it's it's a a mindset thing as well Mm. like i think um when you grow up with your parents having so much say Mm. you know you feel like you have to answer to them or you feel like you know like yeah you have to you have to do what they want you to do or like you have to just it has to be on the way or you gotta yeah whatever entertain it but i think like when you get to a point where you sit down and realize okay like i'm an actual i'm an adult and what they say and what they want me to do whatever like i'll take it as advice or guidance or take it however you want to take it but i think once you start to like shift your mindset and make it make yourself realize that it's it is your life like what they want you to do just has a different it's a different kind of Mm. um it just doesn't hold as much weight yeah you know what i mean it's like i'll I'll respect you and i'll respect what you want me to like i'll take it in as advice but i'm not gonna act on it if i'm not ready for it type yeah of thing. you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely because like literally if you're out here having kids and you're not financially they're not paying your bills <laughs> they're absolutely not paying your bills they're absolutely not going to be raising they will but they'll help with the kids yeah. but you'll be with so just don't like why why put yourself yeah, in a it's position so crazy that she, that she was saying about like doing another degree don't do <laughs> it sis <laughs> all i can it. say is don't, don't do, do it another, just to <sighs> just to get away from the pressure like i'm dead oh my god <laughs> the things we do the things that we do i've heard stories of like <laughs> um you know people that just like fake going to uni like the whole pr- like they get up get ready go to uni yeah, like <laughs> you know it's just like all for the sake of just like getting them off your back yeah yeah i've done that but i faked that i had a job once <laughs> <laughs> straight up i faked that i was like to him yeah like i have work like i've got this like this whole a whole thing because it was just like it wouldn't get off my back <laughs> so i had to lie and say I had, i'm working oh my god um, i'm dying i get it, it. Just like, it yeah because i can't be bothered i don't want to listen to it but i also <laughs> don't want to like I don't want to like ice my parents out, you know yeah. what I mean? But also it's just like, listen, the waves of life, we're yeah. going through, we're all going through it. Do what you have to do. Yeah. Do what you have to do. <laughs> I would hope that eventually they'll get the picture, you know? They will. Yeah. They will. I think yeah. like, I think they just, I think, like I said, I don't think it comes from a place of like, they're trying to terrorize you. I think it just comes from a place terrorize of like, you. that's what it is. Yeah. It's terror. It's terror. <laughs> They're coming from a place of love, and yeah. I think like the 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 more you're able to kind of explain to them that you are in control and you understand mm-hmm. that you want what's best for your life just as much, if not more, than them. I mean, we hope. All you can do is hope. You can't change who they are. Straight up. Anyways, for people that do want to send in your dilemmas, 
we love getting them in guys so please send them through all the links in our bios yes. um you can also send it through our website send them in relationships dating yes. career family like we want to hear all of it mm -hmm. and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel guys we want to keep growing so yeah yes, we'll yes, see you guys yes. again next week have a blessed week bye bye